Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of the SoFastos podcast. My name is Raid and I'm the host and I'm a digital society student at Maastricht University and today I have two guests with me. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, so my name is Margarita. Um, I just graduated from UCM back in January. Um, I studied yeah, international relations, development studies um, and I am the founder and um, leader as well of the Buddy program at the Refugee Project Maastricht organization, um, which was founded in uh, uh, February 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, I am Anas. Uh, I came from Syria. I have been here like for six months now. Um, and I already joined the RPM and uh, the Buddy program. Uh, I would really like to thank you for this invitation. Oh, thank you for being here, actually. Uh, for being this on this uh, podcast. Uh, and yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, so I actually know you through a friend. And I was really interested when I learned about this body program. And because, you know, like, obviously in almost every country, there's like organizations that accept refugees and, you know, they do activities with them and all of that. But I was really interested that each volunteer in Refugee Project Maastricht uh, takes care of one refugee, uh, which you call a buddy, which is a very nice name. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, so I want to know more, a little bit more about the buddy program and how things work out in your organization. Yeah, so I'll just uh, talk about the Refugee Project Maastricht mm -hmm. organization as a whole. Um, so the organization was founded in 2015. Um, during the first or the the big wave of uh, the ref or the during the refugee crisis, mm -hmm. um, and what it, the refugee project master basically is, it's just um, a collection. It's various programs we have where the buddy program is one of them. So mm -hmm. we have the buddy program, we have health program where yeah. there's hikes, other sport related uh, events. We have women and kids. So this also helps mothers. Um, and also has events for children. Um, yeah. We have also um, language uh, program where we help refugees uh, improve their English, Dutch language, any other yeah. kind of language training. Um, we also have career training uh, and career services. Um, so, yeah, and the buddy program is one of those. So it's okay. really just, it's quite yeah, big. It's a um, lot bigger than I actually <laughs> yeah. Uh, knew. Yeah. yeah. And then the buddy program is one of the programs, the actual newest program that was mm -hmm. uh, founded. And the aim um, of the buddy program is also quite different from all the other programs. Okay. We kind of try to target the needs of refugees through all of these programs. And why the buddy program was founded was uh, during the COVID pandemic. Yeah. Um, a lot of refugees didn't have that social connection and especially coming here wanting to integrate into society it's very important to be able to connect with locals to learn more about the the dutch society and you can't do this unless you're in contact with dutch people whether it's students here or locals um yeah. and i think you can also mention a comment about this i think you are offering something too good and so essential for the refugees and um the early time when they are here in the Netherlands because the thing is uh, you came all the way along here and I can't describe you enough how much the way is difficult to reaching here and you just feel here that no it's still so many difficulties you are facing uh, in terms that uh, you are in a new society like a new culture uh, you feel like sometime uh, you feel like isolated uh, you don't know how to deal with this new culture and still uh, I should say uh, the refugees are like from different backgrounds mm -hmm. so just to and give that, a little bit more context yeah. you are a refugee coming here to master yeah yes I am and you are her body yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right okay just for the viewers to actually understand yeah. where, where you're coming from <laughs> Yeah, I came from Syria. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, I told you, when you are here, like, uh, you feel like you are facing more difficulties, you know. Uh, because when you are on the way, uh, you are just thinking about just reaching to uh, yeah. to the safe place, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you are in, a, in the safe place, you discover, like, no, there are 
till more things you have to yeah. face, you know. And here comes the the rule of uh, the RBM, the body program with all their activities. And uh, Margarita mentioned that they are like wide organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are targeting all the sections of the, I mean, like the ages, the women, the men, the young people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they are they are offering something uh, very important for for us. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw them like leading the way to and just making bridges to this new new community, mm -hmm. which is you know something so important. I would say again, uh, and yeah, with so many activities, you know, so events. So you see. Yeah. Like uh, helping the refugees to delve themselves more in the society. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I technically am, and I'm not a refugee. I'm actually Palestinian as well. Yeah. So in Lebanon, where which is where I come from, I am so still... I assume you are familiar. Yeah. With... Well, I would not say I'm very familiar. Yeah. Because I basically yes, in Lebanon, even on my basic, I, don't, I have a document, not even a passport there. Yeah. It says Palestinian refugee in Lebanon. You know, like even the small details, which is like the passport number, it says PR first. You know, mm -hmm. Palestinian yeah. refugee. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I actually am lucky as well that I have an American passport. So really, the refugee difficulties that you would experience in Lebanon, even till now, after my grandparents have moved to Lebanon over 70 years ago and uh, not moved. I mean, they were exiled from Palestine in 1948. And um, yeah, so even um, even until then, like we still are not allowed to own an apartment, for example. We're still not allowed to have a work vehicle, like mm -hmm. those little things that really uh, make life difficult. Yeah. Um, luckily, I also had an American passport, so I did not go through these difficulties. And that's why, like, me coming to Maastricht this year as a student, I, I obviously came as an American. And, uh, yeah, I had access to all the facilities. And, you know, I, it was it was easier for me. Like, I didn't have any refugee problems. Like, I don't really consider myself a refugee because I don't, ha I don't have to go through th these difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. But even as just, uh, you know, just coming here as an international student, it's already hard enough. So I can only imagine when you're coming out of a country that's, you know, going through war and you're, as you said, your only goal is to uh, just to reach the country yes. safely yes. first. Yes. You yes. know, so, um, yeah, I want to ask you about your experience, like coming here and also what's what what is your experience living in Maastricht right now? Oh, my God, uh, my experience I mean, the way was so difficult, and uh, Margarita knows I had an accident mm -hmm. on the way. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, difficult and dangerous. And how did you come, uh, by the way? I did not get it. You mean like uh, you know, like as you see, a lot of refugees like they come through boats. They come through. Oh, uh, just some people do. I fly. use so many things to reach <laughs> here. Yeah, <laughs> okay. this is the truth. Yeah. Uh, like I crossed uh, many countries to reaching mm -hmm. here and um, at some borders I was trying just to cross mm -hmm. uh, and I had an accident I broke my leg okay so um, I think Margarita saw me when I was like um, yeah, just yeah. came new here mm -hmm. I was using uh, crutches okay uh, I was really in bad situation Oh, and uh, I see this opportunity to thank uh, Netherlands mm -hmm. because uh, you mentioned some difficulties in Lebanon regarding refugees. Yeah. The good thing here that uh, we don't have such thing, such difficulties. I mean, okay. they are providing uh, so many good things for okay. us as refugees. I would really thank them for this. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I, I was like thinking about uh, on the way after this accident happened, happened to me, I just wanted a hospital. Mm -hmm. This is, it was like my first priority. Yeah. Um, first thing they did here, they took me to the hospital and, you know, they are just great, you know. Yeah. But I would say that the I, I don't know if I could mention, um, call it like a problem, but here uh, the problem for refugees are like more socially. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, um, it's still new culture for them. Okay. They are new. I mean, so many barriers yeah. they have uh, to just, you know, like speaking about the na- language, new language. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them, they don't even speak English. So the problem here is more like uh, social social pro- yeah. problem, you see. So you feel like the human and necessities, yes, like they're and, there, you know, it's just yeah. socially being, uh, getting used to it, you know, and yeah, that's the difficult part for you. Yeah, so difficult. And there is something else. Now, when I am speaking to you, you fully understand, I mean, the meaning of the, when you are refugee or because we are from the same atmosphere, mm-hmm. let's call it. Yeah. But here, um, I think people, they are like just hearing about refugees from the news. Yeah. And uh, it's so important for organization like RBM to raise the awareness toward the refugees. Yeah. yeah. I mean, connecting the locals to them directly, as you said, it's so important and beneficial to yeah. break this ice, you know, because sometimes I would say there are there is like stereotypical images mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. about let's say it like this yeah. honestly there is some stereotypical images about some nations about some people and when you just raise the awareness about these refugees and you just give a chance for locals or uh, the refugees to get contact in mm-hmm. contact to each other. Uh, so many things will come more clear, maybe some, you know. I mean, we need this awareness about yeah. the refugees. Yeah. Um, when they are like isolated in mm-hmm. some societies, it's very bad for them. Yeah. I mean, it's making the process of this integration even longer. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I feel like this is a common thing in all countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's... even in Lebanon, which is a country in the Middle East, it's a yes. neighboring country to Syria. You will still see this isolation and you will still see this stereotypical images of yes, Syrian yes, people yes, or yes, Palestinian yes, yes, people. Yes, yes. And yeah, it's very unfortunate. And that's why you know. Your... I mean, isolation, uh, depression, frustration, you name it. Yeah. I mean. So, uh, in my experience, I first saw them. They were they were like <clears throat> making flyering in the camp. Yeah, if I, they I'll, just I can yeah. just elaborate on the process. Yeah. yeah, I can just elaborate on the process uh, just to make it a bit clearer of how we actually reach the refugees. Yeah. Um, I've experienced as well quite often that students are not aware that there is mm-hmm. a refugee camp right at the other side of the river. Um, And I mean, it it hits quite close. I mean, a lot of students just don't know about it. And I do know students as well that want to help refugees. I I actually didn't know that there's a camp so close in proximity. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's really right in the city. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, And it's quite shocking the moment you actually realize. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, how did we not know? How is, you know, is, is there's no, you know, how don't we know? Yeah. Um, so what the buddy program does as well as the RPM as a whole is, um, we create flyers and, uh, every Tuesday, once a week, we go to the camp, Mm -hmm. um, we sign up because not everyone can just enter there. Yeah. And, uh, we flyer at the moment that the refugees need to do their fingerprinting, um, once a week. Um, and that's how I met Anas. Uh, yeah. I was flying. Uh, it's it's a typical flyer with a QR code of the sign up yeah. sheet for the buddy program, and um, there's other board members as well that are mm-hmm. um, flying their own programs. Um, and then yeah. I saw Anas, and yeah, he was uh, using his crutches, and we just connected, and um, mm-hmm. he signed up, and then. I was also looking for a new buddy because that's how actually the buddy program was founded. Um, I was teaching Dutch to um, a refugee uh, from November onwards. Mm -hmm. And then um, he was actually leaving then um, during summer and he just connected me a little bit more to RPM. Um, And yeah, I don't exactly remember what... There was just yeah, that opportunity. That, uh, I was really satisfied when I saw the guys there. Yeah. Because uh, you feel like you think about how I am going to deal with the new this new society, and mm-hmm. you find mm-hmm. like the guy are the guys are there just uh, 
find it like a, a great opportunity to just you know mm-hmm. uh, go for such activities so yeah i joined them mm-hmm. uh, i just want to ask one thing before i forget uh yeah. you mentioned that not everyone could access the camp so can yeah. you elaborate more on that yeah so um I mean, how it works is that we have to go to the reception. Okay. Um, and at the reception, we sign up as, um, yeah, for RPM. Okay. And it's also a limited number of, of people that can, can go. So it's usually four or five people that okay. can fly her. Um, and then we fly her from, for about an hour. And then uh, we have to leave. Yeah. Uh, I think this is something... Uh... Uh, it's orga- organizational yeah. because it's like for Kua thing but for us if, uh, it was the question like for accessing the camp uh, yeah. we can have visitors but the limitation in time I think after um, 10 p.m. we can't have uh, any okay. visitors but uh, if we have visitors they can come just register their name mm-hmm. and they are okay they can go for our rooms and um, I think this is organization thing for uh, the RBM because uh, uh, the thing I know there is a coordination between uh, Kua and uh, and the RBM as I understood. I'm yeah. not uh, I'm not yeah, pretty yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. The the Kua, um, yeah. I mean, when we sign up, they know that we're from the RPM that we're not just any visitor. So it's it's yeah. a regular thing that we come once a week yeah. to fly or so, yeah. okay. and we also coordinate our events. Um, mm-hmm with the COA in some way to reach more refugees yeah um so we do work in proximity with them yeah no i feel like it's really important that you are really bringing all this awareness to students mainly but also to perhaps other people in the city um because as you said like not some people don't even know that there is a refugee camp uh, right in the city you know and um yeah so when you talk about the body program and him being your buddy what what is it really that goes through like how do you help him or how 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 do, how is the program structured and what's the main goal out of it i would mm-hmm. like to ask yeah um so how it really works is um i'll just explain the process yeah. um so my team now we're four people we're going to expand it into a bigger team seeing that the okay. buddy program is growing uh, exponentially very quickly yeah um so me along with another team member and then we also have anas seeing that anas is at the camp he doesn't need to sign up so we can kind of use it as well to our advantage um but we go there we fly her and then uh we communicate with the refugees um the refugees then sign up to our sign up sheet which they scan the qr code Mm -hmm. and then we get that information we take all the data from the google forms um that data is then transferred to a google sheet um and we also have a different process to recruiting volunteers uh we've done that through um news um we've done that through university group chats kind of through friends here and there Um, and uh, we're going to start also flyering at the libraries and uh, various locations where there's a big volume of students. And um, what it is then, um, there's one person, which is me right now, I'm responsible for the matches. So I then also check the kind of um, requisites. Okay, well, if there's a refugee that, for example, wants to improve their Dutch, but speaks English as well, then I will match that refugee up with a volunteer that speaks fluent Dutch. Okay. Um, and then I kind of take that and I give that to the next person, yeah. um, how the program works. Yeah. And um, then that matchup takes place at our refugee um, project Maastricht Community Center, yeah. which is right over there, right uh, down the street. And the overall aim of the buddy program is just to connect make those bridges between refugees and uh, volunteers yeah. whether that's locals or students the majority of the people are students mm-hmm. um but with the uh, um news article we've been able to reach um phd yeah. um master students also families yeah. uh, which has been really nice and other sororities um as well um and yeah it's just really creating that bridge and awareness that there is the refugee camp and also valuing uh, refugee lives um yeah. to be able to integrate um and be on the same level as as everyone else um Mm. and what it is technically if i am 
or if we're buddies. So as I was I was talking about, I was talking of what exactly it means to be a buddy. Yeah. Um, we also have a handbook where we clearly have written out how the volunteering, what the volunteering experience entails as much as the benefits you have from being a buddy and having a buddy. So we have, first of all, the culture exchange. Um, you gain a culture exchange, um, seeing that uh, we're also from different cultures. Uh, it can also be a language exchange. As I explained earlier, there's refugees that also want to improve their English or their Dutch. Yeah. Um, and as a whole, the buddy program is also mainly to discover Maastricht, integrate. So that's where our uh, events kind of are um, concentrated on. We've had treasure hunts where we've gone to different hotspots in Maastricht. We yeah. have had pub quizzes that we've also focused on Dutch history and Dutch food, things like that. Yeah. Um, so what we basically do being a buddy is just meeting once a week. It's a minimum that's in the contract. And um, we have two events each month from which you have to attend one event. And uh, as a volunteer, you mean? Yeah, as a volunteer, um, yeah. we don't have a contract for refugees because yeah. that would just be a bit too overwhelming. Right. Like coming here, signing another con, like yeah. this, just want to facilitate that. So uh, I mean, uh, usually they attend together, the volunteer and the yeah. refugee, they attend together. Yeah. I mean, it makes events. sense as well. Like the volunteer is doing yeah. all yeah, yeah, this yeah. for yes, you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so mainly like what RPM is doing is meeting the need that he talked about. He said there is the social aspect that's really like they have difficulty with. So you're making sure that you provide um, those um, needs uh, through different ways as well. As you also mentioned, like it's really body oriented. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the body's needs. So if they have difficulty with the language or with certain things, other things in the culture. So that's what you're really aiming for. So the program is different for every refugee, different for every yeah, refugee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really you just know. tailored to each refugee's uh, yeah. needs and experiences. Yeah. Um, so Anas and I, Anas wants to learn some Dutch, so I've helped him with some mm -hmm. Dutch and he also has other buddies, um, which... We did, we did a great stuff actually with all the buddies. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we discovered the city like, uh, more quicker or quicker. Yeah. We went like for uh, the library, for center, uh, ceramic, mm -hmm. um, Margarita arranged some book of the language to, to, to learn. Mm -hmm. um, one of my buddies she gave me a plant I put it <laughs> in my room and I'm <laughs> so happy about it yeah, you see uh, yeah but speaking one about one of your buddies also gave you a bike yeah a bike also yeah. uh, but speaking about the cultural exchange I find this uh, like mutual benefit for the yeah. let's say the other side the volunteer yeah. the locals mm -hmm. because it's still so good and so important also for them to just yeah. know the others mm -hmm. in terms of the their culture, their tradition, mm -hmm. uh, the way they think. Um, yeah, sometimes yeah. they share some um, cooking together. Mm -hmm. uh, so I highly um, encourage the volunteers to go for this uh, yeah. and don't hesitate because... Um, it has like humanitarian aspect yeah. and it's good for them to just have this knowledge about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Like even here, like it's a very international faculty. So you get to learn about different cultures and stuff. So you don't really need to go to a place to learn about the culture because yeah, the culture yeah, is, within, is within a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. meeting with a refugee or and then having them as your buddy. As you also help them, you're also learning a lot about yeah, them. Maybe the Believe food, me. the beliefs, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. of that. And I'm sure it's just as interesting. And yeah, like as you mentioned, it's a really it's nice it's experience for both people. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, especially when you are talking about young ages, like yeah. from 20 to 25. I mean, yeah. I find this ages is like uh, so essential in shaping the, the personality yeah. mm. and the, the character of yeah. the human being. So. Uh, having the chance to uh, have this experience with others so why not yeah i mean it's not just a humanitarian thing and they get benefit also from mm -hmm. this yeah. yeah you see yeah now obviously one topic that i want to talk about is usually especially like in the media and stuff when you see like refugees and stuff you're like oh there's syrian refugees for example or uh refugees from another country like they're coming to Europe and, uh, you know, uh, they're hurting the economy a little bit and stuff like even in Lebanon, 
you know, they would say, okay, it's because of the refugees that it's hurting the economy and stuff like that. So these are really stereotypes and they're obviously wrong, you know, because mm-hmm. um, for many, multiple reasons actually. But yeah, so there's this image that uh, instead of really having an image like, oh, we should accept these refugees because they, it's not like they want to come to these countries. They're yeah. kind no, of yeah. forced to, sure, you know, sure, sure, like sure, no sure. one really wants to just suddenly leave home and go to a place with no goals and just to... You know, like you have to understand that these refugees just have to go to survive. Yeah, they have no other option. You know, yeah. and just to live a normal life just like any other person, you know. So, yeah. So, yeah, usually when it comes to refugees in the Middle East, that's there's this image of them. Um, and obviously, even though there is this image, there's still people like you that are making sure uh, to help those people and stuff but i'm just talking about the media portrayal mm-hmm. is kind of negative i think we can agree yeah no, and definitely. i hope that this in the future does change and i'm sure because of your work and stuff this is obviously will change like i, w- I was really interested to see like my friends who are european you know been born and living here their entire life mm-hmm. and they still really want to accept these cultures they want to help out these refugees um and yeah so i want to ask how was how was it different, like the reception between Middle Eastern, mainly refugees, obviously there's refugees from other countries as mm-hmm. well, and right now the European refugees. For example, right now there is the Ukrainian crisis. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, as a first, if I can just say a comment, I think, you yeah. know, a refugee is a refugee regardless of, you shouldn't focus on, you know, where they come from mm-hmm. or any other aspect. So it's just... Yeah, super sad to see that there is such a difference between the attention that Ukrainian refugees are getting in comparison with um, Middle Eastern refugees and any other mm-hmm. refugees. Now, of course, I'm not saying that it's bad that they're getting yeah, more attention, but I'm just yeah, saying yeah. that yeah. all refugees deserve the same attention. Exactly. They deserve that help. They deserve to be understood. They're like Everyone is human. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. It just infuriates me, but it just mainly makes me sad to see that and especially being in contact with refugees. And that also is something that I've learned a lot working with refugees. I did um, a research uh, last year, um, at the beginning of the year, of why do people have negative perceptions or what influences the perception on refugees. And, Mm. for example, family has a very big... um, is a very big factor. The media is a huge factor. Um, And the main factor that I found to be influential, um, like whether you saw refugees in a positive or negative way, was um, the distance you have between refugees and yourself. Now, people that and I did interviews and I discovered that so I did interviews with people from. Uh, RPM and I did interviews with uh, SBE students and um, from both parties there were um, participants that were in contact with refugees and you just noticed that there was a much better perception of refugees um, yeah. based on your connectivity or your knowledge yeah. and me being in contact and, and very involved with refugees through this program and as well as teaching and, and tutoring Dutch you yeah I've you know, it's just we're very vulnerable people as as human beings. Yeah. Our our opinions are very easily molded. So you know, being being exposed to media constantly about um, negative. I mean, being a European citizen, I, mm-hmm. the with the the refugee crisis in two thousand six uh, two thousand fifteen and, and ongoing, there was a lot of negative art- articles. And then with the Ukrainian refugees, it's all of you know acquiring them. But yeah. I just wish that it was more balanced in some way um and that's just yeah my main comment everyone deserves to be treated equally to to be respected equally everyone's a human and uh i think anas definitely has a comment about that as well i don't know for me i don't feel that difference Mm -hmm. between accepting uh, or receiving ukrainians and the syrians because still now i'm here like for six months I mean, I find them welcoming. Yeah. I mean, uh, the government, the people here. Yeah. They are providing every uh, everything to us, and there is something else. For us, we are going through this uh, refugee process, mm-hmm. but the, for the Ukrainians, they are not going through this. By the way. Okay. I mean, they are indifferent process. Okay. You see. Yeah. 
But can you uh, explain how different it is a little bit? I mean, in terms of the residence and okay. all this process, they are yeah. treating us like refugee. But for them, it's like different, totally different process okay. from the thing I I I I followed on the news and I just heard about. Yeah, you see. But uh, I mean, in the end, I they feel are like th- so that also makes sense, you know. They already I don't, I don't feel it like this okay. for me because I don't feel like I told you they are welcoming, they okay. are providing everything yeah. uh, for both, and we have to also appreciate something that I know the government is um, under pressure. Yeah, recently. Okay. Because I remember the police, which uh, who I um, make the interview with, she told me daily we are accepting uh, seven seven hundred fifty person daily. They are coming to Netherlands, yeah. and she told me the capacity is just one hundred fifty uh, person. So imagine, yeah. imagine the pressure on the yeah. on the government. Yeah. You see? Yeah, so obviously we understand the difficulties that the government goes through. Yeah. And we should also m- highlight that there is a difference between yeah, the government is accepting of these refugees and yeah. volunteers are really mm-hmm. willing to help because yeah. they understand the refugees more, they have more knowledge and stuff. The problem with, with the media is that a lot of the people on media, whether it's social media or news One, and stuff, yeah, they well. have no knowledge of it. They're just saying stuff out of nowhere and this also makes this problem that they're also making it seem or they might also make it seem that netherlands is not accepting refugees even though they are mm-hmm. you know no no they are accepting well, refugees yeah. so yeah that's but the, the thing uh, I, I would comment on uh, i don't know but i feel like for ukrainians uh, maybe they speak the english language more i'm not sure of this but for us we have l- less people who speaks english and this is so problematic you yeah. know in terms of just uh, to get in contact i mean with yeah. the volunteers yeah. maybe I mean, they are yeah, better on on the language issue i'm not sure yeah like imagine yeah. you're coming from another country through war and you don't even know to speak the language of the receiving yeah, country so difficult how yeah. difficult it is yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so you get, so what you're trying to say is the reception is kind of similar when it comes to the i government feel it like so i and feel like the volunteers so. Even though I didn't feel any difference. Yeah, I actually the didn't reception of you know they they are dealing all the people yeah, the same. That's actually pretty interesting to know because for me, I when I saw the difference on uh, the media of like the reception, for example, of how like for uh, Syrian refugees like they were put in camps and stuff, and then when I saw on the media how like. Uh, people in Netherlands are opening their houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're accepting mm. two, three yeah. refugees in their houses and stuff. You obviously see the difference, kind of. You know, like I have never seen such acceptance of refugees, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even, even, and not only in Europe, by the way, even in uh, a lot of like other uh, countries. Um, when they accept refugees, they put them in a camp and stuff like that. So it was really it's so nice to see like how they accepted the ukrainians like Mm -hmm. they prepared for them rooms and you know they made sure that uh they had beds and everything and like you know as if they're part of the household and i just uh which is really nice i just wish there was more of this towards other refugees you know i think um if you get back uh till 2015 yeah uh in europe Mm-hmm. I think people accepted the Syrians more than now. Okay. Maybe because, you know, it's like in new, uh, yeah. the, the things were new. Yeah. And the same thing for Ukrainians now. I mean, yeah. the war is still new. So maybe the feeling is like for the people is more like mm-hmm. attached to it. I'm not sure. Yeah. But well, also, maybe. it's important to make sure that it's not just a trend. Just yeah, because it's new, yeah. you take care of them, and then one year later, you're like, oh, yeah, you take yeah, care yeah. of yourself. That's yeah. also an important point to point out, is yeah. to, to make sure that even till now, there are still problems in Syria. You know, there's still a war yeah, going yeah, on. So yeah, sure. we still have to look after these refugees yeah. and make sure that they, um, yeah, are feeling comfortable and, you know, they have a place to stay at least, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. If, I can just, if I can just comment on this. I mean, um, you have, you know, your 
perceptions and your experiences yeah. personally i do see a very big difference between yeah. how ukrainian refugees have been perceived in the media mm. um now i was only 15 in 2015 okay. so um you know uh, there's also a limited amount of, of news articles that i saw that i read yeah and but also social media wasn't booming as much exactly as now, so, yeah, yeah yeah exactly so for me, the experience was quite different. I mean, there was yeah. a lot of articles of, okay, stealing jobs and also, um, you know, the culture differences and all yeah. of that. And um, and yeah, and, and also how they were acquired into the home. So now, you know, there's also a link on the university website where you can um, sign up to host Ukrainian yeah. refugees into your house. And there's also the Airbnbs and hotels here in Maastricht that are... Uh, acquiring um, uh, Ukrainian refugees. And then on the other hand, you have other um, Middle Eastern refugees and non-European uh, refugees that are arriving and they don't get that same kind of housing no. or, or accommodation. Now, whether that has to do obviously with the process, that's not very, I'm not very knowledgeable about that. But um, I've also seen quite a few articles of, uh, for example, in the Berlin station, there's, yeah. you know, a, a huge crowd of people and they directly want to take someone into their home. Now, that's beautiful to see, yeah. but I don't really see the correlation between that or the, the, the similarities between that and, for example, the negative news and media that I've, see, that I've seen um, with the different or the, the previous refugee crisis mm -hmm. from the Middle Eastern countries. Yeah. Um, but of course, you have, yeah, your own... Um, I don't know. As I hear the law in Ukraine uh, that uh, men are not allowed to go outside, like yeah. from uh, the age sixteen till yeah, 16, I think so they, they want to, them to be yeah. like they have to become a soldier, basically. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. Regardless, country. regardless, this yeah. is the law. Yeah. But uh, this means that all the comers still here are families. Yeah. So we are talking about women, children. Yeah. So I think maybe this is the reason they are accepting this also on the families. I no, don't know. I, I feel like I, I would tend to disagree. Because they are all families after all, you see. Yeah, but even if you see Syrian refugees or, um, you know, refugees from the Middle East, they're also families, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah, like usually it's it's always, it's just human nature to like, yeah. send the women and the children first and just to send at least one two men with them and mm -hmm. just make sure they reach safely yeah so i don't really maybe it has a role to play with the situation but i don't think it's totally correlated or the causation of or like yeah, yeah. why the reception is very different i don't know but when you hear like the cameras all families women and children maybe we'll deal with this thing like differently you see maybe i don't know yeah, I mean, I also cannot say too much. You yeah, know, this yeah. is not my <laughs> exactly. field, yeah. but um, yeah. Um, I yeah. feel so sorry, by the way, for them, the Ukrainians. Yeah. Uh, I really hope all the safety for them. Yeah. I'm really sorry for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, maybe because we had similar thing. Yeah. Um, um, and I hope all this will be resolved shortly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And also, like, for me, when I saw this news, like, obviously, we relate to it and uh, we felt really bad for it. And unfortunately, this thing happened on the media. I'm pretty sure you noticed it, which is like, people were like, okay, why is the reception of U Ukrainian so different than, oh, like, mm -hmm. what's happening, for example, in Palestine right now, you know? And yeah. then there was this... Um, basically this response like don't be so selfish you know and bring mm -hmm. this back to you and instead focus on ukraine which was not the point it's the point was because we understand these situations we were like okay just make sure that these people are actually acting out of like humanity basically yeah. and they mm -hmm. really want to help and this is not just a pr stunt yeah, you know because yeah, yeah. you obviously there's a lot of uh, organizations and stuff that will take this for granted like mm -hmm. oh you know support for ukraine and stuff and it's really just a pr stunt so that's why it's unfortunate that this thing happened on social media so instead of like like yes we understand that what's happening to ukraine is really bad and we're really happy of uh the help that they're getting and stuff but when we 
like people from the Middle East pointed out that why is the reception different to Middle Eastern? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't because they're jealous or, you know, mm-hmm. that because like that's that's senseless, you know, it was more because like just to bring more awareness, as you were yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, like the reception is obviously different. Yeah, if I can just comment on that, I think yeah. um, a main difference as well is not only um, or because now we've been talking about how refugees have been treated mm-hmm. coming, but I think there's also a huge difference between the media coverage on the wars. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's a huge coverage on the war um, yeah. in Ukraine. And, you know, the more you're aware of the atrocities that happen there as mm-hmm. well, you become, I don't know, more aware of the, the um, you know, humanitarian atrocities that the civilians are facing. Yeah. So that could also have an influence with how you then perceive these refugees. Um, and, yeah, I mean the the media on on for example the the war in Yemen is, is still continuing and, and yeah. other wars in the Middle East there's there's not that much coverage so yeah. maybe that's where that distance or that yeah, yeah it also grows there and maybe that can also have an influence on yeah. how or yeah refugees are treated differently yeah I guess you can say that for the Western countries that's the only way that they're able to know about these yeah. wars and stuff is through the media that's being portrayed to them, whether yeah. it's news, mm-hmm. uh, TV channels, or like social media. Yeah. And yeah, that also explains why the reception would be different, mm-hmm. why the perception of these refugees would be different as well. Yeah. So yeah, I guess we, we always need to uh, remember how important the media, mm-hmm. uh, the role of the media plays, and yeah. how it really has such a, a huge impact, mm-hmm. you know, towards yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these situations. It's also very political i mean obviously the ukrainian war is uh the whole issue with the u.s europe against russia i mean that's why there's also been more coverage and in the end as as much as governments have power Mm -hmm. it's also the population and their voice and the governments representing that that will also affect the politics so i think that there's also a difference in, in political interest between wars potentially in the middle in the middle east and wars that occur yeah. uh, surrounding countries of europe yeah. um but if i can just add one more comment um so now we have um, now we have more than 80 90 um participants including volunteers and refugees within the buddy program and yeah. the uh refugee project maastricht also created a group chat for ukrainian yeah. support yeah and the population was very receptive in giving donations. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not 100% aware or knowledgeable about if it was to that extent as well, these donations in 2015, yeah. 2016. I'm not sure, so I can't comment on that. But I have received several um, comments from refugees in the buddy program that have also entered the Ukrainian group chat. And as much as, as Anas also said, yeah. you know, uh, wishes them safety because he's also been in the same situation... Um, I have had those those messages of like, oh, how are why are Ukrainians why is there so much attention there, so much attention on the war? And it's not a direct critique, but it's obviously you know some we have a lot of refugees from Yemen, and there's an ongoing war still in Yemen, mm-hmm. and seeing that Ukraine is getting so much broadcast on their war and and help with ref- Ukrainian refugees, and you being from a different country where there's also a you know a, an ongoing war that's yeah. you're, you're obviously going to question like yeah. what about my country and what about the broadcasting of of my war and what about uh, yeah. refugees from Yemen that keep arriving so I've definitely had yeah. those comments and those whatsapp messages of like okay what's going on here can you explain and as much as I can just voice my opinion like I'm saying it here now and wish that all refugees were treated the same there's not much that I can change yeah, about it, even though I wish that. Yeah, I think yeah, like as you mentioned, out. the media portrayal is very strong and mm-hmm. uh, it really has an effect on this. For example, um, uh, right now they are really praising uh, armed resistance in Ukraine. You know, like how they're like uh, how to make a Molotov, you know, and this stuff. And it's totally understandable. These are people in war. And then, for example, you see the difference in Palestine. Like, if you ever suggest such an idea you mm-hmm. are definitely considered violent or a terrorist even though you are there's literally like israeli apartheid in the country mm-hmm. but because of like how the media portrays it and stuff it's a wholly like totally different perception mm-hmm. you know like in ukraine okay you can be uh you can defend our own country but then in palestine it's like a really different situation and unfortunately yeah this is a very sad situation 
And um, yeah, so I guess we were just saying like how there's a lot of things that are going on that really affects, um, you know, the reception of refugees, the experiences they all have. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so any other final comments before we wrap up this podcast? For me, I'm uh, really proud of you, Margarita, for this uh, program. Um, I would thank Natalie as well for being such um, a dynamo and the organization. And uh, keep it up uh, and just raising the awareness because we really need this. Okay. Um, I hope all the success for you and for the program and for the RPM. I would really thank you for making this so easy. No, I would like thank you for being here, actually. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for having yeah. us. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if you know people listening here, they were they're interested in more about RPM and the... just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you want to say, like how yeah. they can reach? Out? Obviously, I will put the links. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, if someone wants to volunteer, I think you told me that this year there's no more. Um, like the, the volunteering is uh, like it passed the deadline, so yeah. I think it's more focused on next year. Yeah, so uh, volunteering uh, entails a minimum of three months. So yeah. that would have been in the beginning of uh, April. Yeah. Um, we run until 20th of June, 30th mm -hmm. of June, around there. Um, but I've just lost my train of thought of what I wanted to comment <laughs> before. But um, yeah, I just, I just really want to encourage people. Um, oh yeah, the first thing I wanted to do is as much as you're thanking me, I just want to thank my team. I yeah. mean, my like the, the program wouldn't have or can't advance at the rapidity that we're advancing without, um, yeah, without my team. Yeah. Anas is also uh, in the team, and this is also something I want to point out. As much as the refugee project helps with the needs of refugees, we're working also with refugees, and we put them in leadership positions. Yeah. Where Anas is also in the team. Yeah, and, that's uh, so interesting. Like he came as a refugee and now he's actually volunteering yeah, to help yeah, yeah. other refugees. Yeah. That's really nice, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, there's also a new uh, refugee who uh, is from Yemen. He will be right. joining uh, 1st of May as well, just to get the feel of the team. And yeah. potentially we can have then two refugees um, within the team. Uh, we're going to be yeah. expanding. Now we're four people, but we're going to have eight um, in the new academic year. And uh, as a whole, I just want to encourage people to to volunteer, mm -hmm. uh, not only within the buddy program, uh, but within the refugee project Rastikht as a whole. And even though you volunteer maybe only for the buddy program, it's it's not strictly, um, you know, isolated programs. You can yeah. also volunteer in other programs. You can also go to other events. For example, mm -hmm. what we have in the buddy program as well is volunteer or refugees that want to learn Dutch. They're then paired up with a Dutch volunteer, but they also together go to the language classes the dutch language classes that are uh provided so it's yeah the programs are not isolated it's very much yeah. the whole umbrella kind yeah. of um but i would very much encourage people to to volunteer um yeah. there's the events are always really fun we always yeah. have um yeah 30 40 50 people coming um we've added a bunch of of new people in the past um two weeks ago and now as well um yeah. but yeah really what it is we have um the website yeah. if you want to read any more information we have a website which is if i'm not mistaken just refugee project yeah, don't worry i will make sure i link it in the yeah. description okay yeah, so I and will... uh, online you can just see the 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 website is actually being revamped it's going yeah. to be updated but if you go on it now you can see uh, information about each program how you yeah. can volunteer there's the general sign-up sheet there yeah um, there's also the the buddy program. You'll see a, a, um, a web page yeah. of the buddy program, and there you can also sign up. We also have an Instagram, Refugee Project yeah. Maastricht, and there you also have the updates of the events and um, past events as well. Just you know a recap. Yeah. Um, but I would say the events that we have are, are really fun. They're yeah. very interactive. Um, and us and I work very closely with the events as well as Eve um, Eve mm -hmm. Riley, who's also on the team, and Christina Waller. Um, so yeah, I really do encourage people to to sign up and um, yeah. and I do experience a lot of volunteers that that want to to volunteer. Um, 
so i think it's a good dynamic from both parts okay yeah so thank you very much uh thank you all for watching and i guess thank you very much for yeah, being here really we really learned a lot and um yeah it's always nice to share all of these experiences and knowledge with the students of uh, university of maastricht and even if you're watching this and you're not a student or you're not even living in maastricht uh that's the whole point of the podcast is to make sure that it's also relatable to people uh to just strangers on the internet uh listening to this mm -hmm. and yeah thank you very much yeah, yeah thank, you. thank you thank you